the screen share then yeah okay yes i also can see guru bashi parasax okay we just <laughs> Okay. Um. Unless this is a new secret tech that I'm not aware of. Okay, so here we got the invites. Okay, cop say say something so I can see whether. Hello. Okay, yeah, yeah, it should be fine. Yeah, okay. Um, yes, exactly, yeah. And uh, we are actually also very looking forward for this match. We already know some kind of like, of Coletto's, um, yeah, of, uh, Coletto's Rogue, we have seen some of that, but it seems to be like a quite standard Rogue. Um, Pavel is actually running Freeze Mage, and Freeze Mage being usually um, quite, uh, well, pretty good matchup against Rogue. Or what do you say, Echo? Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Like um, the Doctor Boom, uh, what you actually mentioned is uh, also pretty interesting because, like, usually in the standard rogue list, you usually don't see him uh, actually being included. For example, Mr. Yagut is usually playing without him, and the reason simply being that he's like the only BGH target. And also, as you uh, also mentioned, like the burst combo, burst damage, and Doctor Boom doesn't. Um, deliver also additional combo burst damage so usually rogue rather relies on that mechanic and you also said correct like against freeze mage obviously dr boom is like one of the very strongest card especially also because freeze mage actually they don't even run bghs yeah exactly they don't even run polymorph or anything like that all you can do against this is uh, fireball hero power in order to one shot it and then you still have to deal with the doom bots and also the mechanic that if there is a Doomsayer and they are already pretty low, um, Dr. Boom can actually even cheat the um, the block mechanic by yeah. playing him and then your Boom bot set his face. But because it's its own turn, the secrets actually don't take effect. So even with Ice Block on, and for example, Freeze Mage is at 2 or 3 life, the, uh, and uh, there is a Doomsayer coming off. Um, Colento could simply play Dr. Boom. Pavel still don't know that he could have Dr. Boom, so that could also act as a surprising effect. Well, if he was scouting Colento's games, uh, I don't know if Colento actually had it in his, in his Rogue game that he won, because he, was ob he obviously did win the game with the Rogue against Poi. I don't know if we saw the Dr. Boom there, but between um. that said, and if we did and Pavel was paying attention, then he knows about it. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we didn't see it. That that was um, that was the point. Like, um, Colento didn't throw it the other game, so it could have not been scouted. Here we also see like a really nice handle from the Doomsayer, which is very very important yeah, because otherwise it could already been over Colento being nearly all in here. cards getting cheaper but uh, it, it takes some damage off the board because minions have to attack into it because you don't really want to um, attack uh, you don't really want to leave a Taurus alive for more than one turn yeah and, and, and you probably also don't want to zap it <laughs> yeah exactly it, it's just um, supposed to like trade into some minions here mm -hmm. we'll see if Col we'll have to see if what kind of way Colento chooses to deal with this Taurus Mm. I mean, sometimes perhaps if you are already pretty far ahead, you could try to zap it and then simply to overrun freeze mage here. But I don't think that's like. I mean, it's it's always an option, but I don't think it's viable here. Yeah, but Colento chooses to use his small minions to attack into it. Mm. I'm also like looking forward whether he will play SS7, and he indeed opts in to play him. Mainly probably also because he has like the Dr. Boom uh, set up later so he can actually add Dr. Boom additionally even after a potential flame strike could go down. I guess that's the reason. Oh, and we oh, see oh, Milhouse yeah. Mana Storm. Hello Milhouse. This is definitely a fortunate turn of events for Colento. The best minion that you could possibly get out of Shredder. Four damage. Just so much pressure. That's indeed a lot of pressure coming in here. Um, I mean, 17 life, there is an ice block on, but this is already 17 damage um, Pavel is actually facing here, so that's... Okay, we see. Yeah, looks like it's... <laughs> I mean, unless he, unless he uses his Frost Nova here, he might... Oh, he has to, he has to, right? I mean, it's it's uh, 13 damage incoming. It would have not been lethal after he cleared the teacher, and now it would have been lethal again. Um, but yeah, yeah of, uh, like for 12 damage, you usually tend to use your frost number, especially if you have the remaining, um, uh, the mana remaining. Ooh, another flame strike. This. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it will get popped, right? I mean, it's like um, 11, 12, 13 plus 6 from the Poison and Blade Flurry and uh, Alexstrasza can simply get zapped again. So what we will probably see here is, yeah, probably that, right? Redagger, Poison, attacking face, Blade Flurry, zap. Or do you think that's too much just to proc the block? I mean, zap on, zap on Alexstrasza for sure, right? I mean, zap on Alexstrasza is basically killing Alexstrasza. I guess also if uh, not not necessarily I think the idea here is um, if the boom bot is an extra so, so that she goes down to three I mean that's even better but just the boom bots to the face could actually oh oh really he's oh that's interesting so she's actually valuing the zap more than the proc of the block. I mean, it was definitely interesting. I mean, it, it gives the freeze match two turns to actually deliver 15 damage. On the other hand, Paris Colento is saying um, that the freeze match simply doesn't have these 15 damage. Like, that's that's his gamble he takes. Like, if the freeze match, for whatever reason, has a combination of 15 damage, then, uh, like, just as burst, no matter uh, how much mana it costs, it will always deal these 15. Um, but on the other hand, if, if he is... Fortunate enough that Freeze Mage doesn't have this damage, then he still got this zap left for things like um, Arc Mage, perhaps? I don't know, like. Hmm. 
And also he saves the blade through, right? So it's it's kind of a little advantage. It's also uh, to be mentioned that Colanto is actually only one of lethal here, if you think about it, right? I mean, it's so close. Yeah, I'm also wondering what... Maybe he just didn't see the play, or maybe he realized it too late. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it, it was uh, quite a... Uh, like, it was quite an easy play to see, so I think he decided actively against it, but it's... Um, yeah, um, I, I think both lines being, of course, always very close. I mean, the one play which we actually suggested would have also depleted his entire hand, mm, which would have made him, well, vulnerable to any kind of, mm, yeah, any kind of potential heal into fr freeze. So he was actually playing around heal and freeze at the same point. But it's, it's really. Yeah. But yeah, it's 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 definitely the question whether I mean we see both hands, so for us it's pretty easy to be said <laughs> that he should have not done it. But you you never know, right? Okay, so um, yeah, now now he can actually uh, proc the block, but well now there is Antonidas and the Antonidas actually being left unhandled. <laughs> But he indeed decides to do that. Yeah, the slash pressure will provide uh, protection from the Antonidas attack, so all that Pavel has to work with is uh, fire balls to face and not the attack from the Antonidas. So uh, Coletto is in theory safe unless Pavel has another frost ball. Well, actually, can, can Pavel even uh, prevent lethal? Oh, yeah, he, he has to fireball his own scientist. Yeah, that's exactly what he needs to do. But actually, if this is Ice Block, he wins, right? Because then he can deal 15 damage to Powell here. Like, next turn. Oh, it seems to be... I, I can actually take a look at it. And this probably Ice Bore, yeah, exactly. Be yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. But there is Blade Flurry. Oh! Is if Colento uses Blade 3 here, he simply wins right away. That's right, and he can just use it because... He yeah, yeah, he, yeah, exactly, yeah, he should just use it, yeah. Yeah, he it and takes the first game. A little bit surprising, but we said before that with Dr. Boom in, on the board, it's just uh, so much harder for the space mission to deal with everything that broke past. And yeah, Pavel did struggle a little bit there, and... I know we actually already saw that it's um, control warrior, and um, yeah, and it is against uh, also Pavel's control priest, which we also already saw. What do you think is the matchup there? Like, who's favorite? Right, right, that's, that's true, and how many are actually being played. It's funny because, like, um, I was always wondering, because, like, I I'm, I'm was, of course, not, like, control warrior expert and uh, priest, uh, not at all. So I was actually even um, 
asking Xiao because like Xiao is like the control warrior expert, right? So I was actually asking Xiao like what are good matchups and bad matchups and Xiao actually thinks that the matchup against Priest is basically nearly unlosable and if Xiao says something like unlosable he means usually like I guess 70% for warrior so or perhaps 80 something like this so he, he thinks it's really really good because yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. I I, I think I think as you showed, no, I show I think he was mentioning like the control priest, and um, in his opinion, um, the the warrior will always win the fatigue, and it will always come to fatigue because both decks being kind of reactive on board. So warrior will always be able to keep the board clean, and priest will always be able to keep the board clean, resulting in fatigue later in the game. And fatigue will always be won by the warrior because uh, the warrior actually runs, um, yeah, better armor ups, better heal, and uh, also Justica is better in warrior than it's in priest, uh, respectively. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, in theory, the only way Priest can win is if it generates more advantage than the Warrior can. Exactly. So... Okay, I'm also just checking. <laughs> okay, some saying you are too quiet, some saying you are too loud. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh wow, so many cards being thrown by Pavel here with the circle of healing. Five cards drawn. So Pavel definitely not uh, playing for the cheek war. He wants to end this game before this happens. Okay. And he has a lot of solutions for big memes already for anything basically. For small memes, he has Holy Nova, Pyromancer, for big memes, he has two Shadow World Death, Ozin, and the Mind Control. Mind Control will come into play in a big way, I would assume, in this matchup. Such an insane card in the control mirror. Okay. Check. Just like Sylvanas. So many cards in hand, he's able to easily refill the board. However, we see more options for Lord Clear in front of hand. He still has a brawl. You can also just play it slow and maybe just use a weapon for now because he still has a lot of health to play with. Sometimes you can just set up a weapon and then uh, brawl after that.
Okay, so here, yeah. back, back I am, okay, <laughs> yes. So, what do we see here? Yeah. Did, did anything happen? Oh, mind control, I actually see mind control, by the way. That's, that's also one card which is um, usually like not staple in the, in the um, priest deck, but should definitely help a lot here, right? I mean, in this matchup. Ah, I didn't see that. I went getting myself something to drink. Like that's that's what uh, <laughs> the okay he executed. It's interesting. I, I didn't see it. So, but we um, see Pavel actually playing Sylvanas here, and that's interesting on a board like that, right? Because usually you would like to play Sylvanas as an answer to a big threat, but uh, perhaps Pavel is thinking that he already got enough answers for as many big threats as they could be and then it definitely makes a lot of sense to just drop Sylvanas because usually like as you see basically now Sylvanas now nearly gets close to no value whereas usually if you play it against a big threat you simply can use it as a big threat killer or even overtaker handling at least one card perhaps even two Yeah, also, also another thing is that um, usually you won't get any targets for your car buy. So it only makes sense to use it as a value proposition. Especially because also Pavel has two of those. Also what's interesting is that he used the shield back here and the Mm-hmm. I'm actually quite surprised that Colanto played the uh, uh, Shield Slam over the Execute here. Um, perhaps he just thought, okay, 4 armor is very suitable against uh, 4 life. But in fact, I also, um, yeah, I also think that, or I, I would also keep the Shield Slam in the hand and use the Execute. After Justica came down, it really makes a lot of sense because the tank up, as you said, simply delivers you with so much armor that, um, yeah, that Shield Slam could, could become better than Execute is. I, yeah, some door was ringing, so I will just check that. Yeah, I actually was listening to the this stream for a while, and actually, I actually am, or was. Oh, you, you was uh, quiet, like, your voice was quiet, or what? Yeah, yeah really quiet. Okay. Just a sec, I have some, yeah, you, you will do the commentary a little bit because I, I just have to check something.
right now Pavel snap snap plays that nice control on Sylvanas. This is taking it and Valencia doesn't seem to have a solution against that. He could of course just attack it and bash it. Exactly what we're gonna see, bash into attack. The two other minions are not that much of a threat yet. But the Light Warden actually can get fairly dangerous. We'll have to see how Quentin decides to, to do that. It would have been so good for Quentin to just have a bomb has to be able to attack it. But in order for that to happen, he's sort of dead. Considering that Considering that Valencia already right now I don't know if you can actually hear him it's kind of distracting <laughs> like he's gonna heal it first and then swap the health this way actually so heal it and Vol'jin it so Vol'jin will get eight attack uh, eight health I mean oh this is even cooler actually the circle of healing that has no other use right now because there's no organized soul priest or anything like that healing up the blade master healing up the star cultist healing up the grommish so Vol'jin grows in health, becomes a mighty 69, and then just slam finishing it off. Very nice play by Pavel. Not afraid of the brawl because it has it has been played already. And we see that Colento is running out of solutions. All he has left is that one execute against that. Uh, oh, actually no. Never mind. He's big game hunter. After the taskmaster buffed it, buffed the Vol'jin. So he does execute for another minion there. I'm almost out of cards. And we see right now that Pavel actually is running out of cards. So Despite him having so many threats on the board. If those threats get handled somehow by Colento, Pavel is just out of threats and Colento will take the game. Colento still with a considerable health lead. Will be able to survive the blows from those minions fairly well. Tanking up. I'm out of cards. Out still. We'll see the saving grace. So we'll just get a couple of weapons. While those are useful, those are necess not necessarily what Pavel needs. He he really wanted to have some high impact minions there. But most of them are gone already anyway. Gromach has been played, Alex Brother has been played. Must be played Sylvanas too. Yeah, the decolite of pain in Pavel's hand is pretty worthless right now. What does the hero power aim at? You could also just play a weapon. 
Yeah, this is actually smart. Because over over the course of four turns, you will have to be able to attack with uh, at times. And because during four during those four turns, the game will most likely end. And I, I doubt that the game is gonna go much longer, especially with fatigue kicking in for the priest already. So Pavel has to finish his game quickly before the fatigue takes its toll on him. Kolinda of course tries to clear the board up as well as he can. Let's see how this works out. Oh, that's not how he wanted to boomba to it. He needed it to hit on a bigger minion so he could execute that. Looks like he's executing a... Okay. Ah, he's gonna use slam and bash. And then probably taskmaster the slime and attack into the blade master. Yeah, that's a very nice clear by Colento. Even has enough uh, mana to tank up. And with that, it's gonna be really tough for Pavel to still do anything. Oh, this is Baldi. Playing the Acolyte just to have an additional source of damage. Think of fatigue. Yeah, desperate times call for desperate measures. So, despite does it take? Does it take? Yeah, it's still not enough. It's enough to clear the belcher, but Corinto's life total will be preserved. Pavel takes another chunk of fatigue damage, courtesy of Acolyte. He obviously didn't want it to stay on the board for another turn with that whirlwind effect from the Despite coming in. But yeah, with a with a tank up being a factor here, I don't see Colin. I don't see Colin to losing this. Tank up basically always countering late master attack and the weapon won't in it. So this game is over. Even if Colinto was out of that. Although I guess then fatigue might have been a factor. Hmm. So yeah, I guess this game is not over just yet. Well, it probably will be in a couple of turns. And yeah, Pavel sees that he can't do anything against this board anymore and concedes the game. Colento taking it. And now he is. 0 in the lead. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And now, once again, the Freeze Mage will come out. And he will face off against Colentos Paladin. And this is actually a very interesting Paladin. This is a secret Paladin that runs Genie of Zephyrs. And or what what's his name? And Seal of Champions. One Seal of Champions and two Seal of Champions. Choose to mulligan that away. Keep the Seal of Champions though. It's a pretty good card against control decks. The Divine Shield makes it makes the minion so easy to just So in this spot, Colento could have actually coined out a secret, decided to keep the coin for later turns. I 
And now what is he gonna do? We could see mini bot coin secret so to um to keep the secret keeper safe. Although we might also see a coin out cog hammer. Okay guys, I just came back. Okay, so what what happened? Eko, what happened? Yeah, so Colento uh won the series. Uh, not the series. Won the series already, so so quickly. Yeah, okay, Warrior, that, that was also what we actually expected, right? That he will win this Warrior against Priest thing. Yeah, Pavel had a lot of pressure on the board, but that essentially the Justy card tank up was too much. So now there's like secret paladin with the jinns actually. I saw Colento actually using the jinnies, yeah, the four sick jinnies. Yeah, exactly. This is a version that Spectro uh, recently introduced, um, and yeah, Colento plays it in this tournament. I played it in that um, play to win, uh, no time to win tournament. <laughs> the play to win tournament, yeah. The time to win tournament. <laughs> Mm hmm Okay. Um, so very fast. Uh, once you have the gin on the board, it's such a huge threat. Because Blessing of Kings being plus 8 plus 8 instead of plus 4 plus 4, or Seal of Champions being plus 6 plus 0 into Divine Shield, is pretty sick. Oh, so you actually play the... Yeah, but I mean, for 5 mana, for 6, is that not like incredibly weak? I mean, for 5 mana... I mean, even if you... I mean, okay, Seal of Champions, but uh, you will also... Do you also play the plus three attack? You bring Blessing of Fives? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or oh, don't Just you? Blessing of Kings and uh, Seal of Champions. Blessing of Kings, Seal of Champions. And this, that's good enough, yeah? Ah, I can really not believe it. Ah, I don't know. Like, I mean, it's a threat, sure, but I mean, how often does it really happen? I mean, that, that they suddenly are 8-10 and... Yeah, I think so, right? I mean, sometimes if... yeah. But, uh, so here... Yeah, but it's not like, I mean, K2Z is also like, if if, if K2Z um, works, then he also wins you games, but usually... But okay, I mean... So, what do we have? A pirate can, yeah, the pirate can. I mean, that was also like a kind of a small failure, right? I mean, the pirates are simply so bad that... That even if there is a nice pirate can, it just doesn't go. Um, well, yeah, I mean the the pirate can for sure, right? I mean, if pirates will ever get viable, the pirate can must be in the deck twice. I mean, it's like a better flame waker if you have only pirates. I like or a better knife juggler. No, it's a better knife juggler basically. Okay, so like we also know that Colento's um, well, there's Colento's secret probably It should be unfavored in general against Freeze Major. What do you think? Yeah, there is. Uh, if Colento is running the same list as I run, as that I ran, it's uh, also going to be a divine favor in there. And this card is obviously pretty good against Freeze Major. Oh really? Divine favor one or like. Yeah. One divine favor, indeed, yeah, and that's interesting. Hmm. Is it really worth to run one divine favor? The yeah, I know. Fireball for uh, Havel to handle it. That is pretty sick. Mm. That's interesting, I mean... I mean, Pavel also, I mean, that's that's kind of a little bit ugly for Pavel because, like, uh, of course he had the Emperor discount, but he doesn't have an Ice Block yet, and there is also no Scientist in his hand, so the Ice Borea, I mean, it only enables, like, bringing Pavel to 25, and yeah, you're right, I mean, the genies in this particular position are actually pretty sick, because it, yeah, but he uses Blessing already, right? <laughs> so no genies. 
strike to come down next turn after that wizard set up. Mm -hmm. And therefore he wants to save at least one minion from that board clear. I guess it's rather about um, uh, Doomsayers actually. I think it's rather about Doomsayer Freeze because Doomsayer Freeze, like, there's nothing Colento could actually handle and would actually completely destroy his entire board. And uh, Colento actually played around that, still having enough tools with the uh, Tyrion and the Jin in the hand, now even during the Mysterious Challenger. Alright, okay. But, but there is a do say. <laughs> no, it's like he, he does this fireball on the Challenger and, uh, and Iceland's on Tyrion, right? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, and of course, like uh, minions. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Pavel uh, also simply doesn't have a hand, to be honest. There is like Pyroblast, which is 10 damage, and another 6 from Antonidas, but it could change, right? I mean, this is already 16 damage we see in Pavel's hand here, so he only needs like another 8, 7, and Pavel should be fine, especially because the board gets rough now. He will have enough time to do that. I mean,. Uh, yeah, but also on the side note, what, what does Colento even do against uh, the Antonidos into Ace Barrier? What does he even do against that? Yeah, it's true. It's, it's very tough to deal with. I mean, actually, there's no way to deal <laughs> with it at the moment, right? So... It's true, it's true. Yeah, I like going with a stronger deck first because you can, um, yeah, you can just get the momentum going. You might tilt your opponent a little bit because of two losses in a row. Okay. Hmm, I also just see, <laughs> I also just see that you're, uh, it seems too quiet. So let me think about it. How can I make you louder? Hmm. I guess. Uh, how could I make you louder? Hmm. I think what I could do is probably putting this down. Putting in game sound and then making this louder. Okay, press it to work. Okay. Twenty. Okay, alright. I made you. I made you louder. 
let's hope that this works out. So, um, good, good. So, guys. Uh, so, yeah, Priest versus Paladin. What do you think of this matchup? So, it's um, uh, Priest versus. So, first of all, it's like 2 uh, 1 for Colanto here, right? 2 1. Hmm? Yeah, it is. 2 1. Colanto has left his. Paladin and Pavel has left Priest and. You know? And uh, something. Ah, okay, I will check. I will check. Um, so. Mm -hmm. You say you didn't see it here yet. Okay. But um, yeah, to, to the uh, matchup Priest against Paladin. Well, actually. It's something we quite rarely see, but I would say it could even be f f favorable for priests, right? Because priest is actually a class which tries to counter aggro, especially aggressive stuff on board. And once they actually um, made it happen that Paladin actually runs out of gas, there's nearly like a way that um, Paladin can actually eventually come back at all. Yeah, there is a lot of board clears with um, double Holy Nova and um, double Circle of Healing with that organized Soul Priest. So, uh, plenty of ways to clear the small minions. And if there is like a big a big minion, like the Series Challenger, there's also two Shadow Wood Deaths. So oh. Um, actually, um, uh, oh, did you already see both Holy Novas from Pavel? Okay, okay, so he's running too. I mean, it's not super standard, right? I mean, like um, Zetalot, for example, very often only runs one Holy Nova in his decks. But okay, that's interesting. Okay, we see also the first Mysterious Challenger coming down, but it doesn't seem that Pavel... I mean, also the Mysterious Challenger wouldn't have, like, wouldn't even retrieve secrets, so it's a little bit awkward, isn't it? I mean, did, did Colant actually draw, like, a lot of the standalone secrets? Like, a lot of yeah, them? He did. I mean, look at this hand, this is, this is as bad as a draw can get, drawing all your secrets and then two Mr. And then two Mr. Challengers, right? That's, that's not fun. Yeah. That's, that's not fun at all. And the Mysterious Challenger just retrieved one secret. I mean, how, how bad is that, please? On the other hand, you see Colento getting beaten up by his own own weapons. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a German saying, right? I mean, like getting beaten up by like, do, yeah, it's a German saying, I guess. Mm. Oh, Pavel really wanted that. Uh, yeah. The mysterious challenger. But oh well. Yeah, absolutely. But it doesn't look like a bad a bad spot at all, right? I mean. Pavel now even like is nearly at the 10 mana slot and once Pavel reaches this 10 mana for the mind controls it's completely over. On the other hand, I mean Pavel despite having this double Okanai, double circle and double holding over, uh, he still didn't draw any of those, right? So Yeah, there's Pyroman yeah, there's exactly there's Pyromancers and Holy Novas and all that stuff. Well, what I'm saying is perhaps he could even get over uh, uh, overrun, but it doesn't look like this. Uh, with, double, with the second Kabash Shadow Priest coming down right now, sure it only steals like one one, but it's still good value. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. So it's actually interesting because, like, in the series beforehand, like, Pavel already could make, like, a reverse sweep, actually. So against Surrender, he was actually behind 0 to 2. And then actually managed to decide the series still for him, which was a pretty good accomplishment. And we could actually nearly see the same again against Colento here. I mean, he was yeah. absolutely hopelessly behind with a zero to two, but he he didn't lose hope. And I mean, here he is, right? Exactly. I mean, often not in conquest, uh, you can just have a strategy of beating one specific deck. Maybe Pavel in this case has that strategy to just beat the specifically the um, secret fellow that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, perhaps he could even delay for the evil plan to mind control the 8 3 shredder at some point. 
Yeah. I'm what? Yeah. I, might, I might just keep the mind control uh, for something like a Tyrion, which can be hard to deal with, and um, hope to be able to uh, handle those other minions uh, with cards like Shadow of Death and Holy Fire. Okay. Once you mind control a Tyrion, it's basically game over. Oh, absolutely. But on the other hand, like I guess, if you mind control uh, an eight three shredder. <laughs> it's it's also but but yeah it seems that um, he the decides not to do it. Oh and the one one comes out that's of course also not very. So how how does this even work like I mean there's okay so this came out and this puts it on that yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes it's it's interesting Pavel not managing to draw his uh, AOEs properly so. Colento's minions just staying on the board for longer than Pavel wants them to. And now we see that interaction with Gina of Zephyrs. Yeah, but I actually, I, I mean, I, I don't exactly know. I mean, it could have also been kind of a misstep here because, like, Pavel actually killed this Pilot Shredder with probably knowing that there could be a redemption. And, like, killing a Shredder, if you think your opponent could have had a redemption. I mean, it's not really the best play, right? I mean, yeah, I agree. I think that it could have been better to just kill the um, secret keeper and then get let the buff go on the shredder, and then you could you had you would have a good mind control target too. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I mean, now it's pretty. I mean, the the Belch actually blocks 16 damage here. 16 damage. Is there is nothing else, right? The Belcher blocks 16 damage, that's so sick. Ooh. The co oh, oh. Now it's, now it's, uh... Yeah, now it's one. Yeah, he goes down to one. That's that's awesome. That's that's really awesome. But I mean I did, this will probably do it, right? I mean we see a cock hammer and the mysterious challenger coming down. That's that's pretty sick. Bringing power to one. Yeah, the power doesn't run anything like a light bomb. There will be no way of dealing with everything that Colento has after that this return to the board. And Colento, of course, knows what Pavel has because he saw his whole deck in the Warrior game. But it's still very close, right? Because they're. I mean, let's say. Ah, but it's it's probably not. No, probably not. Uh, there's just no way. Yeah. Hmm. Ah, maybe there is. I mean, you mean shredder? Uh, you mean like uh, doomsayer or what is? Yeah. <laughs> mm, uh, uh, I guess. I guess there. Yeah. I guess we have to hope for the miracle doomsayer. I don't think it will. Yeah. It's like. The doomsayer has to pop out of the shredder and also he has to sacrifice the. Uh, or can I soul priest so um, so he can heal himself and be safe from the clock hammer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's it, it's like the two percent, right? Okay, so it was not that surprisingly. Um, so Colento being the first who actually advances out of the group A in this tournament, so that's pretty good already. And no doomsayer for Pavel here. Yeah, Colento is one of those guys where, which, which, uh, which people always pick as the favorite to win a tournament because he's, uh, he's won so many of them already. But yeah, 